Greetings. In this video, we are recording the scripture reading and the homily from what would have been our service of evening prayer and healing on Spy Wednesday of Holy Week 2020. Spy Wednesday gets its name from the tradition that it was on this day, on Wednesday of that week, that Judas sold out his master and began to look for a way to betray him. And so, it has been the church's tradition to gather on this night to pray for all those in need of healing and to do so through the laying on of hands and anointing with oil. We cannot do this in person this year, but we can still pray through evening prayer and we can still look forward eagerly to the time when we can be together once again when this outbreak has passed. A reminder that the bulletin for evening prayer is available on Palm's website, as with the other Sunday bulletins. So if you wish to use this from home, you are more than welcome to. And after the homily, as is our custom during healing services, you will hear our own Steve Inners playing, There is a Balm in Gilead. And so let us listen for words from God together. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word, the prophet Isaiah writes. The weary? Who here is weary? Full disclosure, I am. And by the time many of us watch this, we all will be weary. Holy Week, by definition, is tiring. It's dramatic enough and busy enough for all of us without the added complications this year of reorganizing our volunteer schedules, of adapting our liturgies for video recording instead of in-person celebration, and trying to keep up with our congregation when we can't see each other very much. That's why I won't say as much in my homilies about the outbreak during this Holy Week. You've heard plenty about it, and you'll have heard more by the time you watch this. And part of the church's job is to remind everyone that life does indeed go on, no matter what curveballs we are thrown in a given year. Even if it were a more traditional Holy Week, I assure you, we all would be a bit weary by now, because there is still plenty to do. Steve would have an endless array of gorgeous music to practice, and choirs and instrumentalists to rehearse. Ruth and Pam would have piles of bulletins to prepare and to check and to print. Our army of amazing volunteers in this congregation who staff our services would have all kinds of things to do to make Holy Week possible. They too would be weary. That's why there is a little known saying 
among church professionals that gets tossed around this time of year. The reason that Jesus came out of the tomb on Easter. That reason being, we like to say, so that everyone who worked Holy Week could crawl into it. Tonight, we who are already weary come together to pray. To pray especially for healing. Healing of body and mind and soul. We can't comfort each other with the laying on of hands and anointing this year. But we can still pray for each other for the grace and strength to bear and to move beyond illness and injury, for the chance to rest and to recover, and for peace as death draws near. So we read from Isaiah. You may have noticed we read tonight the same words that we heard from the prophet on Palm Sunday morning. Traditionally, Christianity has interpreted Isaiah as speaking for Christ. For certainly, Christ is the one in whom we see enduring this kind of abuse and then finding his vindication in the resurrection and the ascension. Biblical scholars today aren't quite so sure. Isaiah could also have been talking about himself or about the people of Israel finding their vindication in return from exile, which happened several decades after this text was written. But whoever's talking, whoever the subject is, the good news is still the same, that no matter how weary you get, God is not weary of you. Despite the loss and the separation and the grief and the weariness of their exile, the one who taught them and led them like a mother would soon speak to them a word that would rouse them, that would rouse them from exile, that would bring them back and put them where they belonged on their native soil. Then, centuries later, as the body of a young carpenter from Galilee lay in the tomb, drained of its energy and of its very lifeblood, as it lay there in the cold tomb in the midnight darkness, the father would whisper a word that would rouse him as well, rouse him from death, opening the tomb and bringing him out into life and glory everlasting. One day, that same word will be spoken to us as we rest in our graves, a word that will rouse us from the sleep that is death and bring us out of our graves to dine forever with our Lord at the eternal wedding feast of heaven. That word will actually sound quite familiar. We've heard it before. That word was already spoken to us as water met human skin, and it will be whispered again and again in our ears all through our life and through death. We call it the forgiveness of sins. So, weary ones, rest well. Rest well and know that no matter how tired you get, God will never get tired of you. Knowing what some of you who are watching this are enduring right now, I wish I could lay hands on your heads tonight, pray with and for you, and anoint you with oil. Plenty of you are juggling cancer and the draining treatments that go with it, are wading through the murkiness of dementia, are sitting anxiously to await test results, or are standing alongside family members dealing with health issues, wondering what shoe will drop next and what the next steps forward will look like and where they will take you. As the church, we've been through this before. 
and we promise to love each other and to be with each other, to be there for each other from beginning to the end. We still can, even if from a safe distance for a time. We can still worship together tonight in video format and do it from afar. We can still listen to God's word online, and we can still hold each other in prayer wherever we are. Our Stephen ministers are still here to pray with you and to care for you as long as necessary, even if that care must be over the phone right now. Our prayer chain waits in the shadows, whispering their prayers, unseen and unsung, but they are here. It will always be that way, as long as the church exists, which will be forever by the grace of God. As an old hymn says, we thank you that your church unsleeping, while earth moves onward into light, throughout the world its watch is keeping, and never rests by day or night. Our prayers for each other and our care and our love for each other will continue as a pillow on which we can rest our heads, as will the love of our risen Lord until that day when love becomes a whisper a whisper that rouses us from the sleep of our graves. For no matter how tired we may become, even if that tiredness results in death, God will never grow tired of us. For that indeed, thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.